Hello. I would like to thank Flowing Fountain Ministries for the opportunity to share the word of God with you in February. We'll be discussing love, and I'm Barbara Pemberton. Let us pray. Please read with me. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, our Savior, and for your Holy Spirit, our teacher and comforter. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive what you want us to know today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to be looking at four aspects of love for February. The first one will be a definition of love. Next, we'll be showing you how God loves us, how that fits with this definition of love. Then we're going to be talking about the love of Christ to his bride and the love of God and love one another. So let's start. In the ancient Hebrew word meanings, a website by Jeff Benner, Love is defined as a gift. We do not choose our parents or our brothers and sisters, but they are given to us as a gift from above and a privileged gift. Sometimes we don't think so, but God's put us in our families for a specific reason. And we are a gift to that family and they are a gift to us. Continuing with the meaning of love in Hebrew, as a verb, the word love means to provide and protect, but is given as a privilege. That gift is given to us as a privilege. To have intimacy of action and emotion, we're told to love God and our neighbors, not in an emotional sense, but in the sense of our actions. So let's think about that again. So when we love our spouse, the husband provides and protects and, and realizes his spouse is given as a gift and he has intimacy of action and emotion. Also in a family, we are provided and protected and we're gifts to each other. And our intimacy of action and emotion is we can say things in our homes that we can't say outside the home. So let's continue. So what is the love of God to us? If we look in the New Testament, John 3, 16, let's see how the Hebrew definition of love fits. For God so loved, he provided and protected and had intimacy of action and emotion, the world that he gave his only begotten son. That was an intimacy of action and emotion that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's protection but have everlasting life, that's provision. So you can see how the Hebrew definition of love fits in the New Testament, John 3, 16. Let's go one more verse. John 3, 17. For God sent not his son, Jesus, the personal God-given gift, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus provided First, a way of restoration of God's provision and protection for our lives. And two, a way of restoration of intimacy of action and emotion with God. So the world was just as wicked then as it is now. And Jesus came to give us a way to get back to God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So if we look at John 3, 16, and we put the words just right, you can see the word Valentine comes right down the middle of John 3, 16. You're welcome to use this and share this with your friends. God bless you. So let's go. Let's look at the love of Christ and his bride. So Jesus spoke to us like he was a Jewish husband. So we're going to look at the Jewish customs here, Jewish wedding custom, this column, what Jesus did for us in the scriptures that match. So in a Jewish wedding, the groom's father makes the match and chooses the bride and the groom approves the choice. Jesus, for us, the father, our heavenly father chooses us as the bride and Jesus approves the choice. We'll be looking at the scriptures, John 10, 28, 29. Then the groom would go over to the bride's house 
and he would offer her a cup of wine. So it says here, they would then break bread and drink from the cup to seal the betrothal and new covenant. So there was wine and bread uh, over at the bride's home. And if she, if her dad and she accepted the, the cup, the wine cup, then she was married. So for us, Jesus breaks the bread and drinks from the cup at the Last Supper, or our communion meal. And this is his new covenant in his blood. So every time we take communion, we're saying, we accept you, Lord Jesus, as our husband. And we're married to him from that point. In John 10, 28, 29. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave me them, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Hallelujah. So let's look at another point. The, Jew, the groom will make a speech of promise to his bride, and he would come for her soon. Jesus' speech is recorded as a promise to us, his bride, that he will come again for us soon. This is in John 14, 1 to 3. The groom prepares a place for his bride and builds a room addition on his father's house. And Jesus says the same thing. Jesus says he goes to prepare a place for us in his father's house where there are many rooms. Now, in the real earthly world, the father has to prove the construction because the groom might not build a very strong, sturdy house unless because he'd rather go back and get the bride. So his father has the right to approve his construction. So in John 14, 1 and 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus is speaking to the people around him who understood the Jewish wedding that the groom had to go back to his father's house and prepare a place for the bride. Let's look at a third point. In a Jewish wedding, the father is the only one who knows the day or hour the groom can return for his bride because remember, he has to approve the construction. For us, Jesus said that no one but the father knows the day or hour of his return for us as his bride. That's in Mark 13, 32 and 33. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Amen. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about the correlation between Jesus' words and the Jewish wedding, you can read a Christian love story by Zola Levitt. You can find it usually on Amazon as Kindle or order it in a little uh, paperback book from the Zola Levitt store online. So let's look at the third thing, fourth thing, the love of God and loving one another. So Jesus tells us who we should love and how we should love. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God, that's who, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, that's how. And in Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor, who? Your neighbor, as thyself. How? You love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Amen. We might point it out, you say, well, how do I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind? But just recently, when I was fasting, I fasted my cell phone. I took my cell phone time and played songs on my piano and worshiped the Lord. And it made a tremendous difference. So he's asking you to set aside your cell phone time and your gaming time or TV time and give some of that time to him. He just wants some. And so you'll have a beautiful relationship with the Lord when you take time to be with him. Praise God. Jesus, as he'll manifest himself to you in John 14, 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved in my Father. I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So he says, he'll show himself to, show himself to you. The Father and Jesus will abide with you. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, 
and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Because that's what they want to do. They want to be one with you and fellowship with you. And they need you to keep his word. So read your scripture. You can't keep his word unless you know what his word is. So God is love. 1 John 4, 7 and 12. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That we might live through him. Here in his love. Not that we loved God. But that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Take away those sins. Beloved, if God so loved us. We also to love one another. You'll be seeing this thing. Love God and love one another. Husbands and wives love each other. Ephesians 5.33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Reverence means respect, admire, esteem, show devotion and loyalty. So you see the commandment to the man is to love his wife and commitment to his wife is to reverence her husband. We'll see how this is, what this means as we go to the next slides. So first, we're going to start with how man and woman are, are with, with God, what that means. In 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So you often wonder, what did that mean? Let's look at the, the word for man in Hebrew. The Hebrew letters are Aleph, Yod, and Shem. That's for man, it's pronounced ish. For woman, it's olive, sheen, and hay, isha. So you notice they have similar letters. If you look at this letter, the yo, that's considered a God letter in the man. It means he gets all his God thoughts from his head. If you look at the woman, she has the hay, which is a God letter. And that means she'll make it real in the family. So there's two different jobs for each for a man and for a woman with respect to God. Now, if you put the two God letters together, you'll spell the name of God, Yah. So when you have a man and woman that both are godly, you've got God in the marriage. But what happens if one or both do not have God? If you take the God letter out of the man, you have Aleph Sheen. You take the God letter out of the woman's name, it's Aleph Sheen. What does Aleph Sheen mean? It means fire or ash. So if you have one person in that marriage who does not know God, he will burn up the other person. If you have both people that don't know God, then the two fires are going to burn each other up. So that shows you why don't be unequally yoked with someone that's not a believer because you'll get fired that'll burn you up and you don't want that. You need godly man and a godly woman. Praise the Lord. If we look at the wife, her name is considered, is called Ezer, E-Z-E-R, and that means a strong person who can see the enemy. She's supposed to be a helpmeet or an ally to her husband. Now think about it. Your wife can often read other people as if she has a radar. She can tell, are they going to be good for you or bad for you? That's why she gave you to, to, the, to the man. She is there to be a help meter, an ally. So it, it doesn't mean serving as in help as serving means help as being an ally. So, and you can find that book in a book by Dr. Frank Seekins called Men and Women in Fire. And, and you can see a video of that at this link below. So we'll go to the next slide. So love is different for men and women. A woman needs to be included in a circle. When she's outside being included, not included, she's not happy. She's not included in decisions. She needs love. A man is always thinking of himself on a ladder, and he needs respect. If you put him down off that ladder, he won't do anything. So let's look. So love is different for men and women. A woman must respect 
these respect words to her husband to put him on top of the ladder. You're a good man. I can see how hard you are working. Thank you for doing. I am proud of you. Great job. You're the best. That's incredible. I am impressed. Notice how each word pushes him up on that rung of that ladder where he feels really good about himself. What does a man need to do for his wife? What love words does he need to say to his wife? Keep her in the circle, words that focus on her. I love you. How are you doing? Are you okay? Tell me about it. You look beautiful today. I like that outfit on, on you. What are you feeling? What are you feeling? So focus on her. Focus on knowing your wife. So let's go to the next one. Women, respecting is trusting. Find the areas you do trust his abilities, his intentions, and focus on those in your words or your praise. Men, loving means wanting to know her heart. It is not interested in fixing an issue, but knowing and loving her. Now, man's first desire is to rescue and to help. So sometimes women, you've got to let him do that because that's his God-given gift. So Ephesians 5, 25 and 27, husbands, love your wives. Now we know what that means. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy without blemish. So a man has a very high calling in the family where he washes his family by the word of God and helps them become spotless so that Christ, they'll be acceptable to Christ. Obviously, we need Christ to help in that process too, and the Holy Spirit and the Father. Praise the Lord. So what are we to do in February? We're going to love God and love one another. And let's just do a quick review. Love is really a gift which provides and protects those that have been given to them as a gift. The love of God it fits with the definition of the love as a gift. And the word Valentine comes down the middle of John 3, 16. When we think of the love of Christ and his bride, Jesus speaks to us in scripture as if he's a Jewish man marrying a woman. And we can find more of that in the book by Zola Levitt. And we are responsible for loving God and loving one another. So let's go love God and love one another. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you for coming today, and we'll see you again soon. God bless.